Hello friends, it's Kayla. Thank you for coming back to my channel. Today is June 16th and I'm going to spend the next week reading your book recommendations. I did a five-star assessment last year in a video where I talked about all the things that I love to find in books. Women's love prevailing, books about books, mixed media, um, books about mind sharing or hive minds, a whole bunch of things. And I've done videos since where I've chosen my TBR, you've chosen my TBR. This time around, we're doing that again, but all of these books I have selected not knowing what they are, they're not already on my TBR, and I'm just trusting the people with knowing my taste. When planning this video, I actually decided to turn it into a lullathon, which is a readathon I created years ago where people read my favorite books. This time it's about reading my favorite tropes, my favorite themes, my favorite elements. You can make your own bingo board and I'm doing reading sprints right now with my channel members and throughout the week um, where they can read their own things and try to get a bingo. And my goal by the end of the week is to get that bingo. So I'm not totally sure what on the board I'm gonna try to complete because I don't remember a lot about why these books were even pitched to me, but I have screenshots with recommendations. One of them is The Employees by Olga Raven. This was recommended by Caster279. And because it's 12 in a series of interviews and it's a weird sci-fi book, um, I think I'm putting it in the category of mixed media. Recommended by Hillary, I have A Good Year, which is horror, folklore, superstition, and I, this was recommended on the video, but there's nothing specifically in the comment about why or what category it fits into. So hopefully I'll figure that one out <laughs> as I go. But also I haven't read the synopsis of any of these books. So I'm going into them not knowing anything. Uh, this one has been recommended to me a couple times, most recently by Inky Labyrinth, uh, The Book of Nebo by Manon Stefan Ross. They said specifically it fits into the non-urgent or soft dystopian or apocalypse books that I tend to like. This has a rabbit on the cover, at least I think that's a rabbit. And so I know it's been recommended to me for that. And then finally, I have this one recommended by one of my channel members, Kartik. It wasn't a screenshot. Um, I have, this was recommended to me like within a live show. We were chatting about things. It's called 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world by Alif Shafak. And it sounds like a countdown, which is one of the things on my bingo board. So I, and you can only count books, at least this is my rule. You can only count books one time, no doubling up. And so perhaps once I get through four things on here, hopefully all of these will fit in a line. Or I do have some other books from the library and from bookstores like on their way to me. So if they come, I will also fit them in because I have a week to complete this video and some of these are very short. So perhaps my goal will be to fill out the entire bingo board within the next year and I can do multiple iterations of this vlog. But today, this is where we're starting and my first read is this one. I decided to start with this one because it's the only one that's longer than like a hundred or so pages and I wanted to have an audiobook going for this video at some point. So I was just doing some editing and stuff and listened to the first hundred pages of this. And I think it could work for the death one, books just related to death, maybe books that play with time, definitely books with lists or countdowns because you're following this woman um, who dies at the beginning of the book. And the first chapter is reflecting on her birth. Um, her mother was the second wife to a man whose wife wasn't able to bear children. He has dreamed of sons and she had many miscarriages until giving birth to our main character. And that's what she does in the first minute after her death is reflect on that. Um, it starts at saying one minute and she is telling us the story of her birth and what happened before she was born and her family dynamics. While she is in our timeline, like lying dead in a trash can and we don't know how she got there. And I expect each chapter and each minute that we're following in these 10 minutes and 38 seconds to tell us the story of how she came to be where she is, what happened to her, who's responsible. There was a quote in the second minute. At two minutes, she is now like six years old, Layla. And there's a quote in here that says, little did she yet understand that the end of childhood comes not when a child's body changes with puberty, but when her mind is finally able to see her life through the eyes of an outsider, 
which I just feel like is a really powerful thing to say. And so it's interesting, this idea of reflecting on her life and her journey, and is the intention, intention just to let us in on it? Or is there something that she is going to uncover and learn about herself throughout these pages? The writing is stunning. So I'm gonna continue in on this for the rest of my day. halfway through and this book has gotten very sad. And I think it's time to read the synopsis for the first time. In the pulsating moments after she's been murdered and left in a dumpster outside Istanbul, Tequila Layla enters a state of heightened awareness. Her heart has stopped beating, but her brain is still active for 10 minutes, 38 seconds. Tequila Layla's memories bring us back to her childhood in the province's a highly oppressive milieu with religion and traditions shaped by a polygamous family with two mothers and an increasingly authoritarian father. Escaping to Istanbul, Layla makes her way into the sordid industry of sex trafficking, finding a home in the city's historic streets of brothels. This is a dark, violent world, but Layla is tough and open to beauty, light, and the essential bonds of friendship. I feel like it takes a look at, um, I don't want to say like the type of person or the type of childhood that might lead you into sex work because I don't want to imply that if you are an abused person, you don't have options, you don't have agency, or that sex work, on the other hand, also is inherently bad. So I do want to tread lightly on the topic, um, but Layla experienced some really horrific things in childhood that we were we are privy to at length and um, descriptively. It's been very upsetting to read. And now, as she was preyed upon as a child, she continues to be preyed upon at the age that she is um, when she starts working at this brothel or being, I don't know, like enslaved in this brothel. And it's just all very, very sad. I'm not gonna say not as expected, but like, I guess not as expected because I didn't know like what the story was and it was sad enough opening it with a woman who has died. And I'm just, I'm very sad reading about her life. And this kind of implies, like Layla is open to beauty and light and friendship. And then it says she, how she, it's about how she came to be loved and known by her friends. We haven't gotten there yet. So we've been introduced to a couple characters, but I hope, I mean, obviously her story is sad, but I hope that there is more light for me to read and beauty in her life and the people who, who witnessed her journey. But right now I'm just having a really hard time getting through it. That doesn't mean it's not good. The book is good. It's written beautifully. Uh, there have been quite a few quotes that I'm just like, they, they hurt. So I'm going to take my time through the rest of this. Maybe I'll update you um, tomorrow. I think I'm going to take a, a take a break from it. For the last couple of weeks, my morning walking pad time has been spent watching YouTube videos. Usually I listen to audiobooks and that's been nice, but I need to get back to the audiobook situation. Um, but what I've learned is I don't like listening to really heavy audiobooks. Like if I'm on the walking pad, I need to be listening to music or like something light and fun. Um, and I learned that because I was listening to a romance earlier this week and that was really working for me. So today I'm gonna start something else. I'm not continu gonna continue what I'm currently reading. Um, I figured I would start The Employees because this one seems fun and I think it fits for the mixed media prompt, but maybe something else and I'll learn that. Um, I saw this for free or included in my Spotify premium and I keep forgetting to use my Spotify audiobook like 10 hours. So I think this is what I'm gonna do today. I just wanted to update you that I'm switching up my read, but also this just came in the mail. Um, and I think I might swap this one out for a good year because I started a good year and I feel like it's kind of slow, it's okay. I'm sure I'll like it, but if it's for the same ones that the 10 minutes, 38 seconds book fits for. And this one I know works for the mind sharing one. This was recommended by Raina. I don't know if I still have the screenshot, but I just feel like this cover is so intriguing. It's called Such Small Hands by Andre Barba. Don't know what it's about, but I remember why it was recommended. And I'm not sure if this one has an audiobook or if it would be considered fun. I think the employees is, so I'll update you in a sec. Okay, so I did read a little bit of this and I'll talk to you about it in a second um, because I need to do like a proper title screen and move on to the next book as I usually do. But I did end up finishing this. I read it while I was having breakfast and I can't figure out if I feel confident 
about my rating, but upon finishing it, I was like, that's a five star. Like, I'm pretty sure this is a five star. And I don't know why this has been happening to me lately. It happened with The Magician's Assistant. It happened with The Har. That I feel like I've kind of been lacking confidence with saying that something is five stars. I think because I've had a couple recently that have been really clear five stars and favorites of like the entire year and really memorable ones. And so when a book comes up that I don't feel like incredible passion for, I don't want to scream at everybody to read it. I'm like, well, maybe it's not five star, but they are. There is distinguishable things between five stars. Some five stars are favorites. Some five stars are still five stars, but I just can't think of anything I didn't like about this book. It felt kind of like a mix of two other five stars of mine, The Death of Vivica OG and Girls Burn Brighter. Mostly it was the writing. It was just full of such beautiful quotes about grief, about friendship, about connection. And tonally, it really was a lot of different vibes. It was not sad and melancholy the entire time, but obviously this woman, you know, dies and has had a difficult life. But a lot of the book turns out to be about her friends, about people that she has met throughout her life. And it's their stories. Like you dive into their background and how they met our main character. And some of their stories are happier than others as well. But you just get this understanding of connection. And when um, Layla's body is found, they, the people that find it, the people who are responsible for, you know, um, burials and contacting family, see her as nothing but a sex worker. And it's about how people are treated um, who are seen as lesser in society. And this friend group of hers comes together and they want her to have a proper burial and they want her to be seen as a human. And those people, regardless of how little time they might've spent with her, how well they actually know her, they want to see her treated with respect. They're gonna stand up for her no matter what. And the book gets a little bit wacky, like with what they are going to do to support her in the end. And it was just really fun to follow. It was obviously sad, but it was beautiful. And that's just, you know, a good mix if a book can pull that off. I really enjoyed myself. And I'm gonna see if I can find myself a physical copy in person while I'm out today, because it is a book shopping day for me. I have no real plans except watching hockey later. I have no work to do. I have basically taken off the summer, uh, which also means I think I'm gonna do some sponsorships this summer to make up for not freelancing. So I will also probably spend some time like sending emails and stuff. I just got an email this morning that might perfectly align with an upcoming vlog. So that would be cool. It's a Tuesday, so there are new releases out today. And I just think I'm gonna pop around to a bunch of different bookstores and see what I can get my hands on and maybe hopefully find a copy of this. It came out in 2019. So maybe I'll see it secondhand somewhere. vlog anything interesting while I was out and every time I would park there was people like right beside me right in front of me looking at me um so I didn't feel like vlogging so you're getting my haul at a uh, truck stop gas station because nobody ever comes here so I'm not in anybody's way but I just pump gas my gas tank is like really finicky and there's only a couple gas stations I can go to as I say that two cars just pulled in whatever here's what I got I got this is supposed to be the 50th anniversary of Jaws. I don't know if it is, but it's, I thought it said 50th anniversary at the top. That's the one I ordered, but whatever. I got Jaws. I got Woodworm, oh, Woodworm by Layla Martinez. I am loving books that have like just the cover printed on the cloth or whatever, instead of having a dust jacket. But this was a pricey one. It's a horror book. This one was from the used bookstore, Lanny by Max Porter. I don't remember what it is, but I've heard that it's weird. I also found at the used bookstore, um, Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel, because this one was published, please tell me I'm correct. This one was published in 2006, 
which is one of the years that I need to complete finding a five star from. So that was an exciting find. And then some new releases. We got The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. We got Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. And We Used to Live Here by Marcus Kluwer. This one I'm going to save for a haunted house vlog that I'm excited about. I was considering it for a book club pick. I think Gabby is currently considering it for a book club pick. But then I had a couple people tell me, advise me, that it wasn't actually a great one. Um, but the lime green is definitely in season. This is the July read for the Literally Dead Book Club. And then the Midnight Feast, I'm struggling to find something for Summer Ween that has a night sky as the cover, which is one of the prompts. So I think I might read that. I wasn't sure if I was gonna pick up the new Lucy Foley because I didn't like the last one, but I think this will be just, I'm gonna give her one more shot because I feel like the guest list was more of a fluke. I also stopped at the library and I have a whole bunch of stuff. And I posted a little haul of it on TikTok. And now I have groceries to get home and I'll see you there. Oh, I didn't tell you about the employees. I'm reading a little bit, I read a little bit of it physically, and I don't know if I prefer the audiobook or the physical version. It, every single chapter page is from a different employee. They're all on this like spaceship and they're like humans or humanoids, but they're not really sure. They don't really have identities, but occasionally one of them will have an identity. But I think we're supposed to understand them as just like this collective voice. So I understand why the audiobook only has one narrator, but I'm wondering if I would like it more if every, it would have to be every page, which is like 100 to 200 different voice actors, which wouldn't make sense. And then it would go against what the book wants it to be. But I, so I think I prefer reading it physically because even though it is a collective voice, like I can read them independently and feel like they are different people, which they are, but they're also just kind of like controlled. They're all there to protect these eggs, I think, but why and how? And how are they being controlled? I don't really get it. And I don't think I'm supposed to. Am I giving out another five star? I, I don't know. Is this a five? Why am I so uncertain about everything lately? I feel like it might be a five star read. This is confusing, intentionally confusing, intentionally unclear. You're following all of these employee interviews and they are responsible for taking care of objects. And these objects, are impacting the humans slash humanoids and they're emitting like certain things that are affecting the minds of others but because they're both humans and humanoids it's like affecting them differently and it's obviously a commentary on like workplace culture but it also is satirical but not necessarily funny. I think it's the type of book I could really examine and think about what it's saying about humans and our own minds and how we see ourselves. But it's also just like weird and silly and pointless. And that does sound like something <laughs> that typically gets five stars from me. I know the whole idea of this video is five star reads. Like the things that fit in these categories, I typically give five stars and people are giving me recommendations that they think will be five stars based on the things they give five stars. So why am I so shocked that everything is five stars? I'm just questioning myself, but now I need to look at the bingo board and make an official decision with the next two things. This would fit into books with mixed media. I would almost put it in my mind sharing category. Definitely books with lists and countdowns. That, that one was just more about organization, kind of being dropped into unfamiliar circumstances. So I need to commit to the two books and where I'm placing them. And then I can decide where my bingo is. Based on the other things that I have, there's a mind sharing book and an end of the world book. So I think I'm going for the second row bingo and I'm calling the other book, something I played with time, and this one about list countdowns organization. And I guess I'll talk to you tomorrow. Will it be with another five star? <laughs> Maybe. Good morning. I am making myself a yogurt bowl. It's actually not the morning. It's one o'clock. I should have said good afternoon. So I'm gonna be down here chopping up a bunch of fruit while I tell you about my next read, which Again, I started without reading the synopsis, but perhaps we should because I don't know where this story is going, but I'm reading Such Small Hands by Andre Barba. 
Barba? Barba. And I'm 34 pages in. It's only 100 pages, so a third of the way. And we, in the first chapter, followed this girl who was in a car accident, and it was her reliving that experience kind of over and over again and hearing that her father died, that her mother was in a coma, and then she was taken to an orphanage because she lost both of her parents in this accident. And she was really injured, so she had to be in the hospital for a while. Um, there was a scene of her looking down at her body going like, what are those, what's that white stuff? And someone was like, those are your ribs. So Grieving Girl gets sent to an orphanage. And then the next chapter was a collective voice of the girls at the orphanage. We know all of their individual names and we know the name of the girl, Marina. And when Marina gets to the orphanage, there's like a list of the girls' names and she's trying to remember them all. And then we hear from the girls and it's just this collective like, before Marina came, we were all existing as one. We all just wanted to be the same. But then this new girl arrived and she's like changing things. And now I'm curious if Marina's gonna join the chorus of voices or if the chorus of voices are going to get more individualistic characteristics as the book goes on. All right, I've got my fruit, I've got my yogurt, my cashews. Oh, I forgot about you. <laughs> and there's lunch. Just kidding, I need a drizzle of honey. I don't know about anybody else, but I hate flavored yogurt. I hate vanilla yogurt, I hate strawberry yogurt, anything that has a flavor. Like I just want plain yogurt, but then I wanna put all the flavors in it myself. And I chop it up so small, especially the banana, that it just like basically feels like it makes it flavored anyway. Especially if I leave it for a few minutes for all the frozen fruit, because I only use frozen fruit, except for the banana, um, to like thaw a little bit, and then it's perfect. <laughs> I feel like fresh fruit recently has been so hard to find good, ripe, in season, not moldy. Like strawberries for me have been going bad in like a day, and bananas, I buy them when they're green and then they never turn yellow. It's just different buying produce these days. I don't know if anybody agrees. So this says, her father died instantly, her mother in the hospital. She learned to say this flatly and without emotion, the way she says her name, her doll's name, her age. She's seven. Now she lives in an orphanage with other little girls. In the curious, hyper-real, feverish, serious world of childhood, the girls play games of desire and warfare. The daily rituals of playtime, lunchtime, and bedtime are charged with horror. And when Marina introduces the girls to Marina to the doll, she sets in motion a chain of events from which there can be no release. What does that even mean? <laughs> I didn't know like what tone this was gonna be, what genre it was gonna be. It felt more like warm. And now I feel like it's not. It is translated by Lisa Dillman. And actually 10 of the pages at the end, it tells me is an afterword. So it's actually 90 pages. I still feel like I'm a third of the way in, but maybe I'll update you if it gets weird or tense or I feel something. I have now gotten to part three. So two thirds of the way through. Um, it hasn't gotten too weird. It's just kind of sad. Marina is, I don't know, like a creating jealousy, not on purpose, but all the girls at the orphanage, it seems, although we're not really getting any backstory, that they have maybe been there their entire lives. While Marina has had life experiences, she's had seven years of love and vacation and attention and it's hard for the other girls to cope with though of course they can't acknowledge that it's just those are the vibes that you're getting is that they are starting to treat her poorly and they're not including her but also she doesn't want to be included it's all just making me like a little bit uneasy not by what's actually happening but what could like what could come after this anyway i'm gonna finish it now i like it but i'm I don't, I still don't know like what's gonna happen. If it's still just gonna be like kind of obscure and sad or if we're going somewhere super fucked up. <laughs> oh my, that was a book. So apparently this is based on a true story, which is awful. The book gets awful, but not like, <laughs> how do I describe it? I wanted to say like not horror, like scary, not weird awful, but like, yeah, still horror awful. I think I'm not gonna rate this one. It makes me too uncomfortable. It's not graphic. It's not explicit in a way that I was starting to get worried that it could be. The writing was stunning. Like it was at the same time youthful, 
like appropriate for who was narrating the story while also just like beautiful prose somehow that was perfectly balanced at one point the girls went on a little field trip and the description of that entire situation was just so well described and i think also um what they were witnessing was a reflection of themselves and humanity and groups of people and how they see each other as i don't know like rivals or prey or dolls something to be used something to exist for your own benefit it's funny goodreads really has a range of ratings from all of my friends some of my friends have given it one star and i'm like yeah i get that and some people have given it five stars and i'm like i get it it was a really good story but i did not enjoy reading it but is that what the book wanted to exude yes was it successful yes i appreciate the recommendation this was my type of this was my type of book but i didn't like reading it <laughs> fine you pulled my arm i'll give it a four. Oh, this reading vlog is so interesting one more book i'm just about to start reading sprints again with my members for a little fun and check in with everybody what they're reading how they're success is going and i'm gonna read my final book to get my bingo the blue book of nebo nebo not sure how it's pronounced by manon stefan ross it's funny because like i recognize this for sure this is why i said at the beginning either books that i haven't heard of or aren't on my tbr because i knew i had this on here and i've definitely heard of it i've heard of it a lot and the fact that it's not on my goodreads i never added it to my want to read though i've heard about it and have been recommended it so many times makes me wonder what happened either i already thought it was on my tbr so anytime somebody mentioned it to me to me i never added it or i never added it because the first time it was recommended i like read the synopsis decided it wasn't for me and then just ignored every mention of it since because i know that it was a thing when i was doing my rabbit vlog i feel like i considered it or it was recommended maybe it wasn't out yet oh it came out in 2021 when did i do that video wait it says translated from the Welsh by the author. So the author wrote it in Welsh originally and then translated it into English. I guess that makes sense. I just feel like I've never seen that before. Like, did it need to be translated or could you have just like rewritten it in English? Anyway, I don't know what this book is about, except that it's some type of apocalyptic thing. Can I read this? 150, oh, it looks thicker than that. 150 pages in the next couple hours that I'm sprinting, easy peasy. As usual, I will check in with you maybe like a third of the way in and then read the synopsis. This book is actually sad or if i'm like <laughs> just about to get my period or something i have tapped so much of this i can't think of the last time a book made me cry in the first 60 pages um it's about a woman and we're reading from her perspective and her son's perspective who's the same age as my son and so of course and she's the same age as me pretty much so maybe something is happening there but they're just like experiencing the end of the world together and just trying to survive and he has to like grow up faster than you know he should and it's so sad it's not that sad like i i don't know i read so many apocalyptic stories like there's nothing that bad has even happened it's just the way that it's written and the way that we're reading from her perspective of her son and the life that she wished that he had and then switching to his perspective of like like becoming a man and like doing the things that he needs to do to support his family. It's just really beautiful. <laughs>
that's my favorite book of the year. Okay, I'm putting myself back together. <laughs> this book isn't even that sad. Like obviously I think so, but I can look at it objectively and say, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have been crying over this book. I was wondering if it was me or the book. And when I was halfway through, I was searching because I recently learned this like embarrassing that it took me this long to figure out that on Goodreads, you can search reviews by keywords. So you can go to a book and you can type in a word and I typed in cry. <laughs> I typed in crying, sobbing because I wanted to know if anybody else was having this reaction to this book and like they're not, people aren't. But then I also realized most of the reviews are not in English. So like maybe people are crying over it, but I don't think so. And I even took four hours in between the first two thirds and that final third. And like my emotions are in check. Like I'm fine. But this book just fucked me up so much. Now let's read the synopsis. Now that we've finished it. After nuclear disaster brings 25th, 21st century civilization to a close, Rowena and her young son Dylan are among the rare survivors, alone in an isolated hillside in rural Wales without electricity, modern technology, blah, blah, blah. They take solace in the beauty of the Welsh countryside and the fragile new life that emerges after a catastrophe. As mother and son write their thoughts and memories in a special notebook found in an abandoned home, we learn that they have their own secrets. It's not like nothing really happens in here. There's no, it's not like these big reveals, these big impactful moments. It's this very quiet book, which is why it was recommended to me, which is how I describe so many of my favorites. This is like The Road, which I haven't actually read and I will one day, I promise, and I'm sure I'll love it, meets Into the Forest. Um, Into the Forest is one of my favorites and it's just like this quiet book that I have a hard time recommending because it's just like this tale of sisterhood, but it's not like grand. It doesn't feel like a lot is happening. It's just like the writing and it's just um, these family dynamics that even I could say, again, objectively looking at it, like I'm trying to talk myself out of recommending it. I do this so much and I hate it. But I think in the past like eight years since I've read Into the Forest, a lot of books have come out that have this vibe and a lot of other people relate to me on enjoying this book that's kind of about nothing that just makes you feel, it just makes you think about the end of the world. And even like the ending, I have such mixed emotions thinking about what is going to happen to them now and if the ending is actually good for them. I don't think it's even the writing in the way that it's beautiful poetic like that's not what it is it's just the choice the choice of of pairing sentences together like there will be a paragraph that just seems like nothing and then one sentence after it that just like fucking hurts this chapter is from the mother's perspective and she's talking about how unfair it is that he has had to do all these things and see things that he shouldn't have to see like there's there's dead people places right and she's saying like he shouldn't ever have to see these things i'm trying to protect him and then in his chapter the one before the one after it'll just he'll say something that he saw that he witnessed that she's been trying to protect him from but she doesn't even know that he's already seen it he's already so much more aware than he ever should be i don't know she's just like saying he was not like other children that was probably my fault. Like when he was younger, he was anxious. He wanted nothing more than to be invisible. And then she says he was something else after the end. And that's like so fucking sad. <laughs> the end is what they describe as like what kicked off this portion of their, like l the end of life as they knew it. And though she doesn't want him growing up, she's also so proud of him and the things that he's done. But nothing that sad was even happening. <laughs> like, yes, sad things happen. In fact, like, Everything I expected to happen in here happened. This There was no surprises in here and I'm still like sobbing over this little family. Ugh, I can't believe I have another five star in this video. Like this is the most successful video I have done and it's based on people giving me recommendations based on my list of silly little tropes and themes and I love you all so much. <laughs> and I'm gonna continue to fill out this bingo board um, in various videos 
until the end of the year. Let me know if you have anything else for me. No pressure. The stakes feel high now for you to give me like another five star. I am gonna finish this one and thank you Hillary so much for recommending it. I will finish this soon. It just didn't grab my attention right away but I want to give it its proper chance. But I also just want to get this video up which has some of my like favorite books that I've read this year in it. I was apprehensive about some five stars and then when this happens I'm like no that's a fucking five star. So were the others five stars? Yes I think I, I think they were. Oh my god, what a great vlog. I know there wasn't that much substance to it. I don't think I did very much in the last couple of days. I don't even chat with you very much. I was gonna tell you all about my dreams. I've been having crazy dreams lately. Like really long all night dreams where I wake up exhausted. One where I was like being chased by a bear for hours. But I'll talk to you about that another time. <laughs> okay, love you as a friend. Bye.